the online video series over here uh, some, uh, keeps us stoked on snowboarding throughout the whole season. Uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. All these guys work really hard and it's really fucking awesome to see those guys. It's a really, really hard choice to make. But the winner is... Yagur! skip school and come down to the rocks and fuck around. The teachers like knew it and the cops definitely knew it too and sometimes they would just roll up like make us all go back to school. This speed bump we're about to go over, I built this. Oh, yeah. yeah, like I do masonry work. You see it? It was, it was like uh, almost an entire summer. The project masonry takes such a toll on your body. There's no way I could snowboard and do that at the same time. Basically, I figured out because it's it's one or the other. And when I was still more getting like really more into snowboarding over the course of the past five years, in the beginning when I was still doing masonry. You know, I would try to, I would snowboard really hard when I could film with Dr. B, and then I wouldn't be able to work for a week after that because I, even though I might still be able to snowboard with like a fucked up hand or like a little bit of a messed up leg, you really can't do masonry like that. You need your body to be 100%. Do you think you can tell? Did they get you to train? Your heroes for gold. This was my dad's wood shop. He only has a party once a year, and that's like what this place was known for. Because my dad's a musician, he's a blues musician and whatnot, and he knows a lot of musicians and bands and stuff, and they would have like a whole concert, you know what I mean? It would be like the party would, there'd be music all day and night. The party would start at like two in the afternoon and go all the way through to the next day. And if you were in the circle of people from the shop party that create it, the party lasts for three days because the, the night before, you have to be getting ready the day, like completely like blocking off like where all his tools were and like all this shit, setting up where like the bonfire is gonna be and shit and tapping the kegs and whatnot. So everyone's chilling there the night before drinking off the kegs. And then the day of, obviously you party all day and all night. And then the next day we have like a big shop party, like breakfast clean up like type thing where people are still drinking and like having Time, but this was the shop. That whole thing, you can still see burn from the fire and shit. That whole pad right there, this was a massive building. Um, and I, I, it was a part of my life for my entire life. It was there before I was born. My dad built it, you know? So it was, it was really heartbreaking to see it go. He was, because, I mean, the question for a while was, like, rebuild, you know? He's going to rebuild, but for, for one reason or another, he decided to make some other, other business moves and not do that. But his new shop is right in this little joint right here. I've been riding the past couple of years. 
This is a local shaper. Levy Surf Designs. It just so happens to be called LSD. That's the name of his brand. Oh shit, come see this picture of Mary. It was in the it was in the um the snowboard shop. And my mom stole it. I didn't, I asked. At the end of the year she stole it off the wall. We didn't even know it was there. Well I asked for it once and they said no. Fun beating the back. We got like two feet of snow, it was like way before we were in the yacht, it was like seven years ago or something. And it snowed like two feet, and they have a hill in their yard, a big one, and he pushed it up into a tabletop, basically. It was like 10 feet to make it to the landing, but the landing was just all fluff. Like, it was it was made specifically for us to learn backflips. And Brennan was like, I'm gonna go out here today, and I'm, I'm gonna do a backflip on my snowboard. That's basically what he said to himself and his sister. And Brennan had done it first. He had his sister out there filming him, and he did his first backflip, and he was all stoked. Dylan and Skrubsky showed up, and like, they learned him. And then I was like one of the last people, because I was doing something, and I showed up, and there was like nine people that had already learned backflips. And so I felt, I was nervous, you know, I was like, I'm, I have to do a backflip right now. And they were all pumping me up and shit. First hit, I just rolled down. Thank God I did it on this particular jump with all this built up powder on the landing because I landed directly on my head. I went up, I like threw it back. I didn't do it hard enough and I just floated completely upside down and came directly down on my head. I probably would have broke my neck if I tried it at a mountain. But then within like three tries I did it. Brendan made a whole video of it. It was like two minutes long of just backflip after backflip after backflip. Just all different people. It was hilarious. Definitely like one of Dr. B's first videos ever though. And this this guy, he was like the Sims rep at the time. He like took me under his wing basically and turned me on to Max Janky. He's he's basically one of the Wildcats, but I got to meet all those dudes at a young age, like Kale Stevens, Pavo Tikanin and fucking um, West Makepeace and Daryl Trinidad and Jesse Fox. They were like huge like Whistler dudes back then, Wildcat, like, affiliated guys, and I got to meet them and, like, roll with them at a super young age, and then I went hard on snowboarding for a little, like, that's what I wanted to do, because I was good at it, but then I just fell away from it for at least five years when I was, you know, just young and dumb and getting involved in stupid things, drugs and fucking all that shit, you know, I got out of jail and got my life together, like, that. And then I got back in the snowboard. But there was at least like probably like six or seven years where I didn't even touch a snowboard, you know? When I went and picked you guys up last night, I picked you guys up where the snow was and brought you to where there isn't any snow. But I'm not apologetic for that at all because I, you're going to be really stoked. I promise. I think it's under 200 vertical feet. I think it's like 175 vertical feet. Which is like... To put it into perspective, it's probably like the landing of a super park jump. <laughs> I'm serious. Like, the, the actual hill that you're snowboarding on, the hill that we're gonna be snowboarding on today is smaller than the landing of a super park jump. <laughs> a little bit of that will spark what you see in the Yagoons, basically, the creativity that comes from having to make do with what you have there. I don't think that a lot of the creativity would happen if we just had a 
part crew that was setting up proper features all the time and we weren't just looking at a pile of shit on the side of the trail thinking, what the fuck am I going to do with this now? Because then you might just go out on the hill and start riding on the grass or start doing carbs or throw a garbage can out there and start jumping over it or something. And it usually just turns out to be a lot more impactful in the end for everybody, like even for us, because then, then once you made something happen and you go home, it makes you happy. It's right here. See where it says the max? Yeah. That's the bar. That's where we're going to be drinking beers later. That's the bunny hill. That's where all our videos are made. There's the tiki bar where like some things happen. And and there's like that rock up at the top that we've done things on. And honestly, this is no not out of the ordinary. I'm not doing this weird lap just because you guys are in my car. This is my routine. Because I'll lap out here and I'll like see what's going out on the uh, going out on the hill real quick before I park. Because you can see the bunny hill and everything else. Like there's that little railing. Like Scott Stevens rode down those stairs by the water slides and then did a nose pick on the fence and came back on the trail. And that's like the ledge that I use as a creeper and stuff sometimes. And then I just pull up right here. Boom. And there's Scrubs getting Dr. B's whips. That's it. And then I usually finish my split. Let's go check it out.